We're going to go over some financial operational highlights. We'll talk about some technology that we've got going on here organizationally that hopefully is, uh, is assisting all of you and us being more efficient. And we'll talk about growth. Uh, it's kind of a theme uh, for today uh, and what you will hear from us over and over and over again because growth, we believe, is uh, firmly upon us. Uh, financial health, 87,539 meters today. We added 2,275 meters in 2014. That's about a 2.5% increase in meters. Members paid on average $123 for 1,000 kilowatt hours. We watch that number very, very intensely, as we know you do also. You guys don't pay a rate. You pay money out of your pocket, right? And so that's what we are very concerned about. We watch our rates very closely. We compare our rates with other like utilities. We compare our rates also with city-owned utilities and investor-owned utilities. Great differences between uh, the three different types of electric distribution utilities. But we compare ourselves to them and, and happy to report to you that we compare very favorably uh, to all of those. The board approved the return of $3 million in capital credits to members in 2014. Uh, those checks, or I'm sorry, those credits uh, began to hit uh, member bills on April 28th. So if you haven't gotten your capital credit refund yet, uh, it will be showing up on a bill sometime soon in the month of May. Margins were $9 million, just over $9 million in 2014. And what I would do is pause for a moment on that point. Uh, is you, you may be asking yourself, well, you are a nonprofit. You're a cooperative. Uh, that's your $9 million. Uh, that money is only going to come back to you all. It's got nowhere else to go in our wonderful business model. Uh, so why do you need to make $9 million in a margin? Here's why margins are important to an electric distribution cooperative. Not unlike the way you live your personal lives, we are in a capital intensive business. That's not what I mean about your personal lives, but we are in a capital intensive business. Lots of poles, lots of wire, lots of demand. We've been talking about growth, growth, growth. There's a lot of construction of line that we have to go through. To do that construction, part of the payment for that construction comes from rates, Part of the payment from that, for that construction comes from money that we borrow from cooperative banks that we work with. Well, and this is the part that's like you all personally. If you go to, more, to borrow money from a bank, they're going to want to know how financially strong you are. Typically, they're going to require that you have some equity position in what you're borrowing. So if you're going to borrow $100,000, they may require 20% down, $20,000 from you. That's your equity position in what you would be borrowing. We have that same requirement. Our banks have that same requirement from us to make sure that we are financially strong. So when we have a $40 million capital plan, which is what we typically have in asset construction year over year, generally $40 million that we are constructing for members uh, on an annual basis, we have to have a strong equity position too. So what happens at the end of the day, at the end of the year, when all expenses are paid and we're left with $9 million, that $9 million then goes into member equity. That's your equity. That's your ownership in the cooperative. And so the $9 million goes into member equity. That's what we then compare to our overall assets, and that's our, that's our equity position. That's your equity position in the cooperative, just like your $20,000 of your $100,000 in the example that I just gave. Now, what we do over a time frame is rotate that back to you all in capital credits, right? So you make the margin. The margin goes into equity, which proves us to be financially strong to our bankers. And then over time, that money is paid back to you all in the form of $3 million in capital credits for this year. And the board has approved just under $30 million since 2005 to be paid back to you all in capital credits. So wanted to take you through that little journey of why margins are important to us and we are a nonprofit and it is a wonderful business model to be associated with. I mentioned the different, the three different electric uh, distribution providers, cooperatives, city owned utilities and investor owned utilities, right? Those are the three. Investor owned utilities like a center point or an encore, city owned utilities like a city of Austin or a city of Bastrop or a city of Brenham or a city of Lockhart and cooperatives. The difference and why we are so proud and hopefully why you are so proud of the business model that you're in association with is it's just all about us. That's it. 
There's no one else at play in our business model. Investor-owned utilities like Encore and Centerpoint, they have stockholders, they have shareholders. So when they make $9 million, and they'll make a whole lot more than that, but when they make $9 million, that goes back to stockholders. Those stockholders may be here, they may be in China, they may be wherever they are. It goes to stockholders. When a city-owned utility makes $9 million, that money generally gets transferred into what they call their city's general fund. So it doesn't necessarily go back to the people that paid the rates for electricity. It can go to fix potholes or do whatever the city may need to do. In a cooperative like ours, it's the model that I just discussed. And that is, you pay that to us, we pay all our expenses, it goes to equity, goes back to you. It is a closed loop system. So that's what we do with margins. Operational milestones. It took us 14.2 days in 2014 to build a new construction job. Very proud of that number. That was two days faster than 2013. Uh, so it takes us 14 days from the moment a member make request uh, uh, a new facility from us, a new construction job from us, from when we're taking that application to when we're building it. 14 business days. Two days faster in 2014. However, in 2015, we're about two days longer than that. Obviously, what's going on outside today and the weather and everything that we're having to deal with, very proud of our employees. We are working very closely with our members. We call you first. We want to know if you want us on your property building the job. There may be some ruts in association with that. If you don't want us, we'll come back later. That's affecting our number. 32 seconds, the average hold time for callers. So someone calling our call center is generally on hold on average. For 32 seconds, we have a 95% call handling rate. That is out of this world when it comes to utilities. We are typically seeing numbers in the 80% range. Again, we compare all these statistics to other utilities. Generally, the 80% range is what we see. We are very, very proud of the way we're handling your calls. Six minutes better uh, in 2014 compared to 2013 in our power restoration activities. So we are always trying to become more efficient. Everything that you've seen, you saw in the video, everything you've heard others talk about, we are always trying to become more efficient. Also, weather plays a role in that. It doesn't take as long to, uh, to repair or restore a job that's been affected by lightning as one affected by wind. So weather can, weather can help us or hurt us in that. Some of our uh, also operations milestones. 22% increase in our online account logins. Uh, we're actually up from 26,000 member logins to 32,000 member logins. Those are the people that are logging into our website on a monthly basis. So we're up to 32,000. Just under a 32% increase uh, in Blue Bonnet uh, members that are paying their bill online. So a great increase in members paying their bill online. 99.88% of total time that Blue Bonnet's members had power. So we thought it was better to show it 99.88 than 0.12 without. So 99.88 just looks better. Some of the tools that you can find on our website that as mentioned in the video, we are very, very proud of. Our energy tracking tool, you can go on there, Mark mentioned that, you can see everything, you can see your projected cost, you can see your consumption, you see that all striated into hourly increments over a 24 hour time frame, you can, you can see that. We also now have been doing this for several years, so there are several years of history in the model that you can compare yourself to, so all great information if you have a concern about how much power you're using, what it's costing you. Online service requests, we're very proud. This came in with the new website. Uh, you can go online and you can request tree trimming, you can request security light repairs, you can essentially create a service order that you want online. And here's what's so special about that for us. If you go online and you request that your trees get trimmed and you do that online and you hit submit, there is not a human being that's going to touch that until we're actually dispatched in the field and we're pulling the chainsaw out and we're doing some work for you. That all flow through, flows through our system electronically. So when you hit submit on your website, it flows through and it, in, it ends up on the laptops, in the laptops of our guys' trucks in the field. And so they will see that order pop up. They will, uh, they will sort those orders based on the work uh, that they're doing for the day. They will go out, complete that work. They will hit complete online also, and it will flow through that that order was completed. So all of that is being handled electronically, and that has made us tremendously more efficient. You can also report power outages, uh, bluebonnet.coop. Online map uh, shows our outages in real time. So I actually follow the online map. So now I also have the number of the bat phone in the control center, too, if I need to call in there and find out 
what's going on with an outage, but uh, I actually use the, uh, the outage reporting map when I'm following outages and, and what we're doing and how we're performing. Communications tools, Mark mentioned uh, what we're doing to ramp up our communications. Uh, we have more than 5,700 uh, members uh, that have downloaded the mobile app in 2014. That's up to a total of 15,000 members uh, in total that have downloaded our mobile app. Uh, very good performance there. Members can report outages via the mobile app or text. So along with going online, along with calling us and all the tra traditional ways that you would report an outage, you can also go online and report your outage. That way, use the app or text us about outages. Social media, media. If you're, if you're on Facebook or if you're into tweeting and doing that kind of stuff, you can follow us in those areas. Uh, we are tweeting out information about outages. We are putting information on Facebook about outages. So you can follow us there and we'd be happy to uh, have you follow us. What members say about us? What you all say about us? We do a member survey every year. We generally do it in January of each year. Proud to report to you all that we had uh, a wonderful um, feedback uh, from our members again this year. 92% of our members gave us a positive rating. That question is essentially, what do you think about Blue Bonnet? When you hear Blue Bonnet Electric Cooperative, how do you think about them? Do you feel positive about them? Do you feel negative about them? We had a 92% positive rating on that. 66, it wasn't part of the same question. It's a different question, and it's a question about service. What do you think about Blue Bonnet's service? That was the specific question. It's an all-time high for us. 66% of you all, 66% of our members said that our service was excellent. So you were given the choices of, do you think their service is excellent? Is it good? Is it fair? Or is it poor? And we had 94% of our members either scored us excellent or good. We're absolutely so proud because we know that's what we're in this business to do, and that is to serve you all. 94% in total said excellent or good, 66% said excellent. Very proud of that. 67% of our, of our consumers identify themselves as a member, not a customer. That is also very, very important to us. Why is that important? Because you are a member. You are a member owner. And we appreciate and respect the fact that we are part of that kind of a business that has that kind of a business model that we talked through when we had the first slide up that I had the pleasure to talk to you, to talk to you about. Members get capital credits. Members own this business. Members own the equity in this business. This is your organization that you have ownership of. We take great pride in the fact that we are stewards of your assets. Very, very proud of that. And so we're proud that 67%, we want that number to be higher, and we're trying to figure out ways that we can get that number up but 67% of you all view yourself as a member and not a customer. Just as part of a word sort, general words that, uh, that our members reported most often when describing Blue Bonnet in an open-ended question uh, in our survey. Rapid growth, transitioning the presentation to talk about, talk about growth and what growth can do to us. Blue Bonnet serves all or part of three of the top 10 fastest growing counties in the state of Texas. Hayes County, Williamson County, and Bastrop County. Three of the top 10 fastest growing counties in the state of Texas. We have the pleasure of serving. We had a total number of residential lots uh, that will be started in 2015. This is not hypothetical. Anything that you're gonna see in this presentation now, going forward, has a green light associated with it. So these are not things that we're reaching out and going, well, maybe kind of, sort of, not at all. These are things that are moving forward. 1,650 residential lots uh, will be started in 2015. Uh, we have a current percentage annual growth rate of 2.5%. If we continue just with that number, we'll be at 100,000 meters in 2020. Take a look at this chart. This obviously is our service territory. You guys all know us very, very well. There are 11 red dots on this, on this map. Those 11 red dots indicate only the largest uh, growth accounts that we are constructing, that we are working on right now. Now, obviously, we have growth over our entire area, east to west, north to south. These 11 indicate the largest 
of those growth requests for new service. Those 11 dots only, and you'll see, I'll move over here and I hope that folks can kind of see me over there. I'll turn this way. Hayes County, right? Bastrop County, of course. Travis County. Of course, Williamson County is up there and we talked about it's in the top 10 also. Hayes County, Travis County, and Bastrop County have 11 very large construction projects for us. The total of those 11 projects are 13 additional megawatts to bloom on it. May not sound like a whole lot to you guys, but 13 megawatts, I'll give you just something to link that up to, a Walmart, which is a Walmart is a large meter because of their air conditioning, the refrigeration, all that kind of stuff. It's not only a large meter, it's a very productive meter for us because what we call a load profile, they're consistently using power, right? And why that's important to us is you have to build facilities to serve a Walmart or serve anybody else for their peak demand, right? You can't have them go out of power when they peak. So you build for that. So if they can consistently use power 24 hours a day, that's what you want to see. You don't want to see them hit that peak at two o'clock in the afternoon and never come close to it any other time during the day. That's an inefficient use of your resources of your, or, or, or your facilities. You want to have someone that has a more consistent load. Well, a Walmart is about 750 kW, about 250 kW short of a megawatt. So a Walmart's not even a megawatt. So if you add all this up, that accounts to about 16 or 17 Walmarts being added, for example. But what 13 additional megawatts to our system is, it's roughly a 5% growth to our system. And here's why this is important to all of you. 5% growth to our system from these 11 accounts. So essentially, we will be increasing our sales by 4 to 5% each year. That's what we have built into our financial plan, generally a 4 to 5% increase in sales. We are very conservative when it comes to our increase in expenses, as you would expect us to be as stewards of your assets. What we generally include year over year in our increase of operating expenses is a two to three percent increase. So do that math with me. A four to five percent increase in sales or growth, a two to three percent increase in operating expenses. What that means is it takes less stress off your rates, i.e. less of a need of rate increases from you all to continue to serve you all. If your growth is outpacing your, if your growth in sales is outpacing your growth in expenses, then you should be able to go further in between rate increases. Does that make sense? That's why growth is so very, very important to our system. But growth has to be managed correctly. Here is a follow-up chart also to the one we just had when I mentioned that we're serving three of the top 10 fastest growing counties in the state of Texas. Here's what the uh, Office of the State Demographer has said will happen uh, until 2050. From now until actually this is citing 2010 to 2050. You will see Bastrop County at a 268% increase in growth, Hayes County 425% increase in growth, Williamson 368. The Blue Bonnet region you'll see up in the very top right is a total of a 191% increase in growth for our overall system. So that's why we say growth is firmly upon us. I'll give you this quick example, Bastrop County. We serve just under 30,000 total meters in Bastrop County today. So if you just take Bastrop County, just under 30,000 meters that we serve today. Blue Bonnet's got just under 88,000 meters right now in its total, total system. If you apply those percentages to growth in 2050, in 2050, Bastrop County will be larger than Blue Bonnet's total system currently. If you apply those percentages, Bastrop County will have 95,000 meters in it in 2050. Blue Bonnet has 88,000 meters today. So when we talk about growth, growth is here. It's been a wonderful pleasure to share this information with you. Thank you all so much for your support. We appreciate you all.